Can we just acknowledge the fact that Frank Ocean denied the opportunity to work on this album because Brian Wilson wouldn't let him rap on a song? Look, man, I like Channel Orange as much as the next guy, but that stupidity and arrogance on a level that I can't even comprehend. Ugh, just show the thing. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spinner Reviews, and today I'm going to be talking about the new album from Brian Wilson called No Peer Pressure. Let me ask you guys a question. At what point in a legendary musician's career should you stop looking at their new work critically? See, back in 2013, when I was doing text reviews, I gave a pretty scathing one to the latest album from Eric Clapton called Old Sock. Now, that was by all means a boring, uninspired collection of covers that generally went against Eric's strengths. And as a fan, I was left pretty underwhelmed and disappointed. But then I started asking myself later on, why did I feel the need for it to be substantial in the first place? After all, the guy clearly had nothing left to prove at this point in his career, so why should a low-key group of casual jams with friends be put under such tight scrutiny? And honestly, I still haven't really answered that question yet. Mostly because for every old sock, you've got an album like Paul McCartney's New or Tom Petty's Hypnotic Eye that shows that these established icons can still write high quality music 40 or even 50 years into their career, sometimes even while developing their sound with newer techniques. Which brings us now to Brian Wilson, obviously best known as the renowned leader of the Beach Boys. Now, I'll admit right off the bat that I'm not extremely well versed in his work outside the hits and a couple albums here and there, and this is actually my first real exposure to Brian's solo work. In fact, if I'm being perfectly honest, there's a chance I might have actually let this album pass me by if not for the major list of guest features here. Now sure, there are some obvious ones, like some current and former members of the Beach Boys scattered throughout this album. But there's also a real emphasis on this thing, on collaborating with younger artists. And what I really respect is that these artists are known, but not quite the laundry list of pop stars that might make it obvious that he's grasping for relevance or something. First off, you got Nate Ruiz of the band Fun, which is actually pretty appropriate given that songs of his like I Wanna Be The One and All The Pretty Girls show quite a bit of Brian Wilson influence. You've also got Casey Musgraves, easily one of the most acclaimed country singer-songwriters of the past two years, who put out a great album in 2013. Then there's She and Him, acapella YouTuber Peter Hollins, and rounding it out is Sebu from the synth-pop duo Capital Cities, who I actually want to start with, since the song he's on, Runaway Dancer, is probably going to be the most controversial of any song here, at least with Brian's more purist fans. Though to be honest, it's actually one of my personal favorites here, with the fun, upbeat synths running throughout this thing, as well as the great horn parts that crop up and transitions between the verses and choruses. It's a near-perfect meshing of the classic pop song craft Brian's best known for with the modern pop song craft that Capital City's music is full of. Now, before I get to the rest of this, I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the album's title, No Peer Pressure. Not only is it a decent pun, but to me it sort of represents the idea of Brian not wanting to feel confined to that typical Beach Boys wheelhouse. Now, sure, I might have liked the comeback album, That's Why God Made the Radio, that the Beach Boys put out in 2012, but there were definitely parts of it where you can tell that there was a bit of limitation to what they could put on that record. So, on this new solo album, there's much more of a sense of freedom for him to experiment as he pleases. Runaway Dancer is a great example of that, as well as the laid-back and country-flavored Guess You Had to Be There with Casey Musgraves. Which is also one of the more lyrically interesting songs here, sort of delving into Brian's initial bout of fame with the Beach Boys, both the good and bad side of it. And the fact that someone this experienced reflecting on it definitely gives the song a lot more weight and credibility. Plus it helps that the song it does have hints of Casey's unique casual wit scattered throughout it. 
Though my favorite song here has to be Saturday Night with Nate Ruiz. Probably the most perfect of the perfect pop songs here. Tight, infectious melodies, great backing vocals, lyrics that are just light-hearted enough, and Nate's distinct voice pulling it all together. Plus, that key change at the end is just pure gold. However, not every collaboration here really does it for me. Um, like, as much as I want to commend the skillful a cappella arrangement of Our Special Love with Peter Hollins, the song itself pretty much left no impression on me whatsoever. And as for On the Island with She and Him, look, I know this is kind of a cliche thing to compare a boring song to, but this literally sounds like Zoe De Chanel is singing over elevator music. I'm dead serious. Anyway, it's pretty safe to say that the songs that longtime fans will connect more to are the ones that just feature former or current Beach Boys, or that just have no features in the first place. Like, The Right Time sounds like it could have been one of the better songs off That's Why God Made the Radio. Other than that, these songs tend to lean more on the ballad side with a couple exceptions, a little closer to conventional, but they still mostly work. My favorite of these is the beautiful, aptly titled closer, The Last Song, which, if I can be the conspiracy theorist here, almost sounds like a poetic end to Brian's musical career. And if that's the case, then he made quite the tearjerker for fans to go out on. Now, if you'll allow me to get a little ranty for a minute, I noticed that this album isn't exactly impressing critics, just getting a 56 out of 100 on Metacritic, which is kind of weird given you'd think Brian Wilson would be kind of be one of those automatic critical darlings at this point. But here's the thing, from what I'm seeing, it seems like it's just people whining about the fact that Brian dared to work with people not old enough to have a pension yet. Now, are there songs here where Brian isn't exactly in the vocal spotlight? Yes. But bring it back to my original point that I brought up at the beginning of this review, does that really matter? Listen, even as a more casual fan myself, it's fair to say that Brian Wilson at this point has nothing left to prove. He didn't have to make this album. He's already made Pet Sounds, as well as many other critically beloved songs and albums. So why not let go of the reins to work with a few fresher faces for an album as, and actually make an album that's distinct in his discography as opposed to just regurgitating the same thing over and over again to rein in those fans that'll buy anything he does just because they're nostalgic from stuff from the freaking 1960s. The guy has certainly earned the right to, and as I've mentioned over the course of this review, it hasn't gotten in the way of him still making high quality music, so I'm going to give this a light 8. Now whether you're curious as a fan of the Beach Boys, or just as a fan of any of the artists featured here, there's a lot to enjoy in No Peer Pressure, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. <sighs> anyway, if you guys have heard this album, what do you think about it? Do you agree with what I just say? Disagree? Have any feedback about the channel in general? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, share this around with anyone who might be interested. Like the Facebook page in the description for updates. And hopefully I'll see you in the next episode of Spinner Reviews. I went in!